everyone and welcome to the Irish in the UK. Coming up on the show this week, we'll be chatting to Sister Rita Lee from County Cork, who has done wonderful work in Manchester down the years, and we'll be finding out about her brand new project. We'll also be at the Irish Democratic League Club in Haslingdon, Lancashire, to honour Michael Davis on his birthday. But first up, we're off to meet the Cary Academy of Irish Dancing in Birmingham as they prepare for the World Championships in America. John, tell me a little bit about your dancing career. Yes, so I started uh, dancing, uh, as, as you said, at the age of seven. I ended up winning the Great Britain Championships when I was nine and uh, winning my first World Championship when I was ten the following year. Um, so then I competed until I was about 17 and I, uh, over that time I won eight world titles along with uh, I think seven All-Ireland titles, five North Americans and ten Great Britons I think it was. Um, and then uh, I joined uh, Riverdance and the Lord of the Dance. Of course you joined Riverdance at a very young age as well. What was that like? Oh, it was amazing. It was uh, all very sudden. Riverdance had like, just became this huge phenomenon. Um, it, it played at the Point Theatre in Dublin, and then it came to England for a six-week six run at the Hammersmith Apollo in London. So they called my teacher, um, Danny Doherty, uh, quite a famous Irish dancing teacher from Coventry, and um, they called him and uh, asked for myself and Katrina Hale, uh, who's uh, another dancer in his class who'd won eight world titles as well um, to audition for the show. So we turned up, auditioned, we were told on the spot that we got in. That was a Wednesday afternoon and on Friday we danced the first show. And you were lead of the dance for two years, I believe. Uh, yes, in Lord of the Dance, yes. So then um, after I went back and finished my A-levels and then I joined Lord of the Dance and I was Michael Flatley's understudy for, um, for in the original production and then uh, the production split in two so that Michael toured in Europe with one of the companies and I was the lead in the American touring company. Now, the Carey Academy of Dancing here in Birmingham, you've had wonderful success of course. We, uh, we've been going I think 12 years now and in the 12 years we've won 33 titles, uh, just world titles. We have uh, been very fortunate uh, that we've been very successful uh, with We've won every single major title, all islands, worlds, British nationals, Great Britons, North Americans, in both solos and teams. Now tell me about your involvement in Russia. So uh, six years ago I got approached by a lady um, saying that, asking me would I like to come and do a workshop in Russia and would I like to set up my own school. There was a group of dancers out there that were looking for a permanent teacher. So um, I trekked across <laughs> to Russia and we have about 200 students in Russia, all age three, four, five, six, all the way up to 60. Some of the kids have no idea, like no connection to Ireland at all. Some of them really can't speak that greater English, but they know their threes and their sevens and their light jig and the hop jig and St. Patrick's Day. And it's amazing the passion they have for Irish dancing. Tell me a little bit about your Irish connection. Yeah, so both of my parents are from Bunkrana in Donegal. They uh, were born there and they moved, they both moved separately to England, to Birmingham, and they actually met in Birmingham. But we go back to Bunkrana, um, all my first cousins are still there, and we go back and visit, you know, as often as we can. <laughs> a fantastic group of kids who are all actually training really hard now for the World Championships coming up in two weeks so it's a crazy busy time but we actually really enjoy getting the kids ready for the biggest competition of the year. It's, it's a year-long commitment really you know they have so many heats that they have to get through before they actually get to the World Championships so as much as they're going and they're training hard now they have been training all year in fact their whole lives, you know, most of them. Some of them are really young, some of them it's their first time competing, this is some of their tenth times competing, so it's a, it's a year round thing, but a lifelong thing also. Yeah. Now what age groups are you taking to the World Championships? Our youngest is 11, Le yeah, 11, 11, under 12, and our eldest is 25, 26, she just turned 26. 
Now, I believe that you're open here virtually all week here at the Cary Studios, uh, practising and getting pupils in. It's a full-time job. It is. We have classes every day, well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then we have private lessons that we do with the kids for an hour, one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I started dancing from the age of four um, and then I went to join the show, went to join Lord of the Dance um, as soon as I was old enough. Was that where you met John? Um, I knew John before that, I've known John since we are about 10 or 11, um, although I was in the show with him for a while, in Lord of the Dance with him for a while, yes. Now I believe that uh, you're a fitness lady as well and uh, you look after the children here as well and the pupils if anything happens to them. Yes, yeah, I am. Um, I'm a qualified personal trainer and sports massage therapist. So, um, yeah, I do some one-to-one -one sessions with the kids to work on either strength, stamina, endurance. Um, and I'm also a sports massage therapist, so... Now, Kathleen, we know that the World Championships is coming up next weekend, but that's nothing at all to the big day that you've got coming up in <laughs> September. Yeah, well, John and myself are getting married in Croatia on the 9th of September, so... Been very busy between getting the kids ready for the worlds and trying to plan a wedding. <laughs> well, many congratulations Thank to you both. Much. So, where did you two meet? We've known each other a long time. I think Caroline actually introduced us. <laughs> Caroline's my maid of honour. You've got something to answer for Caroline. I have, I have indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I met John just through the Irish dancing scene. Um, I was in Lord of the Dance myself. That's where Caroline and I first met. And then, because John's been in the Irish dancing scene, it's a small community. Everybody kind of knows. Kind of knows everyone. <laughs> Jessica, tell me a little bit about your dancing career so far. Um, well, I've been dancing for 20 years now, since I was six years old. Um, I started out dancing in, where I live in Manchester at home um, and had a successful career for the Lally School in Manchester. Um, I won the All Island and got third in the world. And then when I went to university in Birmingham, um, I came to the Carey Academy. Um, and since then, I finally won the World Championships last year. Um, I won two more All Islands and two more All Scotland Championships. Now, you're really dedicated, aren't you? Because you're telling me you live in Manchester and you drive down here three times a week. Yeah, um, so when I graduated from uni two years ago, um, I just didn't want to leave the Cary Academy. Um, so I w work full time and then drive to Birmingham in the evenings after work and then drive back to Manchester for work the next day. I do that two or three times a week. But sometimes I stay over and get two classes in one trip. Now, Erin, tell me a little bit about you. Well, I've been dancing since I was three, so for 12 years, and I moved to Kerry when I was eight, and since then I've been doing quite well in competitions, and last year I got second in the world, and that was my highest placement so far, and I've won the North American Nationals four times, and got second in every other major competition, and I also won the Great Britain Championships. Now, Aaliyah, tell me a little bit about yourself and when you first started dancing. I started dancing when I was five and I moved to the Kerry Academy at, I think I was eight years old. And since then, I've been the Midlands champion four times. I've came second at the All-Ireland, seventh at the World, fourth at the All-Scotland twice and fifth at the North American Nationals. <laughs> I lived in America for six years and then I moved over here and I started at Cary Academy. I have been at Cary Academy for four years. Since then I have won American Nationals and I have um, gotten second at All Scotlands and then 10th at Worlds two years ago. Why did you choose Irish dancing? Um, I didn't really choose it, my parents did. And I'm glad that they did. James, tell me a little bit about yourself and your dancing career so far. I'm from Birmingham, I've been dancing for five years. Aaron, of course, you're from Westmead. What are you doing over here? Uh, I moved here last, last September to the Kerry Academy. I danced with a team in Westmead for, since I was three. So I moved here to try and climb up in, in dancing. 
Okay. And are you enjoying it? Loving it. I love it here. I'm, I'm doing a university as well and doing a business course here as well. So just training hard and working hard. Uh, I moved from America to here about four years ago. So I've been dancing for the Carey Academy for four years. Um, when I left, I was 20th in the world, and a year after I got here, I placed third. So um, it's obviously an opportunity that I'm really thankful for and that I wouldn't trade for anything else. Uh, I started dancing when I was six. So what success have you had so far? Uh, I've been fifth in the world twice and won the American Nationals twice. I used to dance for the Kenny Academy, but then my teachers moved over to America, so I joined the Kerry Academy in 2014. I'm loving it here. It's just so different and all the facilities like the studio, we've never had stuff like that before. So it's really good to have it here. I lived in Australia for 11 years and then I moved over here for Irish dancing uh, about three years ago. A lot of my family did Irish dancing. My mother, my auntie, my godfather, they've all been Irish dance teachers and Irish dance competitors. So I sort of was brought up in a class. <laughs> Well done to John Carey and all the dancers for the wonderful success they have had down the years. And of course, we wish them the very best of luck for the World Championships in America. Now we're off for a quick break. Welcome back to the show. Now, Sister Rita Lee from County Cork has done wonderful work in Manchester down the years. She has helped so many people in the community. And recently we caught up with her to chat to her about her new project. Sister Rita. We've come along today to see this new premises that you're hoping to, to get the keys for. Now, what's the purpose of, uh, of this building? Well, there are a lot of people in this area who would need the help that we're able to give. And we are delighted to get this building. And there's, there's an awful lot to be done in it, but we're happy to be in this area as well. It's, it's an area where we'd be needed. Yeah, of course, there's a, a lot of people out there at the moment, unemployed, uh, they're sleeping rough. Uh, lots of people are struggling with their bills, struggling with their food. So this is where you come in. You're trying to, you know, help those people on the streets at the moment. Yes, well, that's what we've done for a lot of years. We're quite experienced in it now. And we make it the place very welcoming and people love to come. They love to come just to meet other people first because some of them are very lonely. And then when they get used to us, you know, we find out what's going on in their lives and how we can help them to live a better life. So that, that's our, our, our purpose for coming here. Now, Max, uh, when you get the keys for this building, I believe from Manchester City Council, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, thanks to the Manchester City Council, we get, we get these premises. But it looks nice, it's um, a very nice place in a nice area, but we need to, of course, to improve these uh, premises, refurbish and paint and decorate, and it will take some time and uh, money as well. Now, you've got to do this out of your own pockets, if you like. You've got to fundraise, you've got to get the money. Uh, Manchester City have given you the building, but you've got to do the repairs at your own cost. Oh, yes, yes. And that's why we appeal to the people who want to collaborate with us and donate uh, with job, uh, money, well, doesn't matter how to help us to keep this uh, building ready as soon as possible. Of course, it's highly important that we get the community behind your sister and Max as well, get the community behind you to support you on this one. We do get the community as, as soon as they know what we're actually trying to do. It's amazing the people who come forward and help because they want this area to be helped as well as us. So I have no doubt that this is going to happen in time. Yeah. Now, of course, down the years, both of you have helped helped an awful lot of people and that's what you're aiming to do again. You're aiming to get this building up and running. You're aiming to help the people of Moston and Harper Hay as much as you possibly can. Uh, yes, that's what it's about. But you know, it's also about loneliness. There's a, 
an, an, an amount of loneliness out there. And if we create a nice centre where people can come, and some of them only want to come to make friends with other people, um, and it's amazing how this happens as soon as you open up. So when you do open up, will you be helping people with food or with clothes or, or what's the idea? Well, the idea is to open five days a week with different sort of activities. We will run a, a food bank, a uh, drop-in centre and advice and information with debts and benefits and friendship groups for young people, uh, friendship group for adult people and a work club. So different sort of activities, we want to be very busy every week. Sister, for people sitting at home watching this tonight, or indeed uh, companies and, and you know people that may financially be able to help you a little bit, what would you like to say to them? Well, I would like to say that yeah, we need your help and we can't do this without you. And that um, we can uh, assure you that every penny you do send to us will be wisely spent and this area will benefit and those people who are coming in here will benefit. <laughs>
a, a tremendous uh, a tremendous worker for the uh, Irish farmers and the uh, and the things he did. Uh, the Land League is um, is his great um, great memory. It was lovely to see the mayor uh, of Rossendale as well here today to lay the reed. Oh yes, she she's been a a, a great. Um, a, a great help to the club. She's done a one. She's, she's done some wonderful things uh, for the town, and she is a lovely, lovely lady. And Michael David, of course, was born in County Mayo, and he suffered a lot himself because his own family was evicted from their farm many years ago. Well, he was four years old when uh, when they were evicted, and I think that um, that was something that uh, he remembered the whole of his life, and that was one of the reasons why he fought so hard for the uh, for the farmers and for the land restoration rights in Ireland. And uh, of course, Angus, you've got a lovely afternoon laid on here now for the people that turned up and your members and everything. And Ryan Island is here as well to entertain everyone. Well, Ryan Island is a great entertainer, and um, we have this monument was built in 1956 when Hasling and Corporation redeveloped the area. Uh, and we've laid a wreath um, to the nearest Sunday of Michael David's birthday ever since then. I asked the man behind the bar for the jukebox. the mayor and ladies and gentlemen thank you very very much today for coming for the annual wreath laying at the Michael Davitt Memorial it's a long time since I was a member of this club um, 1956 was when the when the when the memorial was was built when the housing and corporation refurbished the area here 64 consecutive years that we've laid the wreath here uh, at the Davitt Memorial the year 2019, we asked the Mayor of Rosendale, a very hard-working councillor and Kenyan, to lay the wreath at the Michael Davitt Memorial. Thank you. Thank you. I've been a member of this club since 1977, uh, when we had to prove we were of Irish descent, and I'm very proud to have served on the committee and been a member of the club all those years. Thank you. In Dublin's fair city, where the girls are so pretty, I first set my eyes on sweet Molly. Well done to Angus Lindsay and all the Irish community here in Haslington for honouring Michael Davitt on his birthday. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock with his show and we are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. All on Sky Channel 192. See you next week. Hey.